In this episode, we'll hammer home moon problems with a more difficult example. We'll talk briefly about the time of local apparent noon, and we'll finish our discussion of time by talking about moving ships. If you remember to the examples in the last episode, our process was to correct values from the nautical almanac first for latitude and then for longitude. And for the moon, we just had to remember to use table two. Let's take a look at an advanced moon problem. We'll voyage to the southern and eastern hemisphere for this problem. By this point in the series, you should be pretty comfortable with the process for time calculations. Now it's just a question of repetition. We're heading around the world in this example, so pay close attention to the hemispheres. It makes a big difference. We can pull the time of moonrise from the almanac using bracketing latitudes. Again, we're in the south, so pick the right values. That means we've got a tabular difference of 5 degrees, a time difference of 6 minutes, and a position difference of 2 degrees and 10 seconds for our desired position. Table 1 gives us a correction of about 2 minutes for these values. While we're in here, let's just refresh on the directions for Table 2. In the Eastern Hemisphere, we need the preceding date, not the following date like we did in the last example. So we need to go back into the daily pages. And then we pull the bracketing values of 2017 and 2117 for the preceding day. That means we've got a tabular interval of 5 degrees, a time difference of 10 minutes, and the same position difference as the last day. Table 1 this time gives us a correction of 4 minutes, so we can apply them and come up with a latitude corrected times for moonrise on our day and the preceding day. Now to use Table 2, we need the difference between them, which is 32 minutes. Table 2 then gives us a correction of 10 minutes, but again, we're in the Eastern Hemisphere, so this correction must be subtracted. Read the directions if you're in doubt. Once we've got the Table 2 correction, we can apply that to the moonrise date we want, and we get 2129. But don't forget, that is for standard meridians. We're observing minus 8 zone descriptor, which corresponds to 120 degrees east. We're at 124 east, and therefore we need to account for those 4 degrees. So again, in the Eastern Hemisphere, we need to pay particular attention to our thought process, especially if we're used to doing this for somewhere else in the world. Events will happen earlier for us at 124 East, so we need to subtract the appropriate amount of arc, which is 16 minutes, for 4 degrees. This gives us a final moonrise time of 2113. Times of moonrise are seldom needed so precisely, but it is a requirement, so hopefully you feel comfortable with these problems now. Let's head back to the sun for a few minutes to wrap up our discussion on time with one final concept. Later in the series, we're going to calculate our latitude at local apparent noon. This is the time when the sun is at its highest point in the sky, and that corresponds to when the sun crosses our meridian, or our line of longitude. We'll talk more about that another time. For now, all we are concerned with is the time of local apparent noon. The time can be found in the lower portion of the daily pages, and the good news is, unlike sunrise or moonrise, it only needs to be corrected for longitude. Let's take a real quick look at an example. On the 16th of September, the time of meridian passage of the sun is 1155. We want to know what time meridian passage will happen at our position. The good news is latitude doesn't matter, so there's no latitude correction. The longitude correction is the same process that we've learned before. We're observing plus 11 zone descriptor, which corresponds to 165 degrees west, and we're 5 degrees to the east, so the conversion of arc to time tells us that we need to subtract 20 minutes. Our final answer is 1135. Now hopefully at this point, that's as easy as pie, but I want to use this simple example to illustrate a concept that can apply to sunrise, sunset, moonrise, and moonset problems, which adds a complicating factor. If your ship is moving, the position we've been using is invalid. You need to account for the change in position from the time of calculation to the time of the event. Let's use our simple example of local apparent noon. This moving ship problem could apply equally to any time problem. Say we calculated the time of local apparent noon for our current position, and we did the calculation on the 4 to 8 watch, say at 0600 exactly. Well, when we came up with the time of LAN at 1135, that was for the position at the time of calculation, at 0600. If we're moving at all, especially quickly, or especially to the east or west, that time is going to change significantly. So the first calculation is just called a first estimate. In order to get the more accurate second estimate, we need to dead reckon our ship's position from the time of calculation to the time of the first estimate which is a difference of 5 hours and 35 minutes in this case. So 5 hours and 35 minutes is 5.583 hours. The easiest way to do that is to simply DR your position on a chart, pull out the new DR position for the approximate time of phenomenon, and redo the calculation for that position. This second estimate is usually good enough, down to the minute or so, even for a moving ship. But to be truly correct, and I want to remind you you're in the advanced time of phenomenon lesson, you need to take into account the curvature of the Earth and do a great circle sailings problem to get the correct position. 
The formulas for plane sailing and any great circle sailings problems are found in Bowditch. This is too big of a concept to get into in this short video, but here's a quick overview. The number of nautical miles in one degree of longitude is different depending on where you are on the Earth. An intermediate value is called departure. Plugging the values in, we get 83.7. Nothing profound yet, it's just an intermediate value. What we really want is the difference in longitude for 83.7 miles at latitude 30 degrees north. That formula is called difference in longitude, or DLO, and it equals P secant latitude. Recalling our grade school trigonometry, which I'm sure everyone remembers, that equals P times 1 over the cosine of latitude. The cosine of 30 is decimal 8660, so the difference in longitude is 96.7 minutes of arc, or 1 degree and 36.7 minutes. So if you're at a latitude of 30 degrees, and you travel 83.7 miles of distance, that equals 1 degree and 36.7 minutes of arc on the Earth's surface. So we could subtract that value from our dr longitude and get a new position, and then calculate our time for that new position. Since we already did most of the work, we can just get a conversion of arc to time for this value and apply it to our earlier example. So this is worth 6 minutes and 27 seconds of time, which we subtract from our earlier calculation to get a final answer of 11 hours, 28 minutes, and 33 seconds. Again, I moved through this very quickly just to show you how it works. The point is that when you do a time calculation, it's only as good as the position you plug in. To be correct, you need to do a second estimate, and this works for the sun and moon problems of all varieties. If you use the Stella program or any other calculator, that's what it's doing in the background, and it's important to kind of know that. In the last three videos, we've met the Coast Guard requirements for calculating sunrise, sunset, moonrise, and moonset by hand. Practice what you've learned, and when you're ready for the next task, let's move on. <laughs>